other tour guide. <laughs> we are going to uh, play an intro video for y'all. It's just going to talk about some of the tools that we're going to be using and talking about going down into the basement and things like that before I pass out a waiver for y'all to sign. should have been right side up wow. so that's like one of our first kind of punches and we're like okay something might be good it's not supposed to be um, we don't actually have that exhibit anymore which is why i'm glad we have the picture So we have a camera right up there above that staircase. And it's pretty 
typical to see dust particles and things like that flying around very fast. Um, but we believe we see two orbs coming in and just kind of smoothly going up the stairs, which we think that that's because people, you know, they come in every day and immediately walk up those stairs and go to work, kind of just like as an everyday activity. Um, so I have those to show you.
However, there are a lot of things in this case that actually came from the Old Corner Drugstore, which is where that Dr. Pepper was created. Um, the actual Old Corner Drugstore was about two blocks away. This is just our replica of it. Um, so this space isn't haunted. We do have reason to believe that the actual Old Corner Drugstore could be. So that was actually named Shootout Junction in Waco. Um, so back then, a lot of bad stuff happened in Waco, specifically around that area. So that's where all of your gambling, prostitution, stuff like that was happening. And there were two shootouts that made national news, but there were probably a lot more in that space. Um, so, this, as, far as, we know, as far as we know, we don't have any haunted activity. We have had one weird experience. Um, so have y'all heard of mediums? So mediums are people that are just extra sensitive to paranormal stuff. Sometimes they claim that they can see things beforehand, or they just feel more than the average person. And so we did have a medium that was coming to the museum on one of these tours one time, and she purposely didn't do any research beforehand because she wanted everything to be authentic. She didn't want to feel like she was searching for certain things. Um, and so she was telling us before the tour started that she had kept seeing a man named Charlie, that was dressed really well. And so for the life of us, we're like, we don't know who you're talking about, but the chances that there had been somebody that worked here at some point named Charlie was probably pretty high. Um, and of course she came right in that entryway and looked up and saw him and immediately said, that's him, that's Charlie. So she had seen him beforehand. We joke, we're not on a first name basis with him, so I still call him Dr. Alderton. But she saw him in one of her visions before she came, which is kind of strange. I like to let him talk so people like to see it. Hello. His My name is Dr. Right. Charles Alderson. <laughs> Most folks just call me Doc. That's you all. Know, <laughs> we actually scared time. ourselves pretty badly, so we didn't yeah, realize the button yeah, would still be yeah. working because yeah. the breaker yeah. should be yeah. off. Most That's why he's not moving. Um, and then I think yeah, well, I fully expect for nothing to happen, so I was showing him that nothing would happen if I pressed it, and then he started talking. Um, yeah, that was, that's, that's what it was curious about, because I were having me on the tour. <laughs> so we're going to move on to the next room. You might feel like his eyes are following you. I do. I promise they're not. Larry Morrison, the IRB with the truck store. The French camera is the original book. water in this well. It is a real well. It does work when, um, with the seasons changing, it does like fluctuate and go up and down. So um, it does actually have water in there. So it was created originally with this building when they were making their sodas. They used the well water for everything. They had to wash the soda, to fill the soda, um, all of the bottles, everything. You don't wash soda. You wash the bottles. <laughs> this building was built around it specifically yes. for that reason. And in about 1928, um, right in the middle of the Dust Bowl, they were trying to shut down uh, private wells to save water and conserve water. And so the city of Waco said, you can't have that. Um, and that was partially why that factory here actually shut down, was because they no longer had their water source. So when you have a big hole in the ground as humans, what do you do? When you can't use the water anymore, you throw trash and then you cement it up. So they threw lots of bottles, they threw lots of trash down there, and they actually covered it and paved over it. But then a team from Baylor came and excavated it for us, and they went down about 27 and a half feet. That's not the bottom of the well by any means, but that's about where we stopped, just because going down any further is a lot. But they pulled out a lot of glass, a lot of the bottles, you can see in these display cases, all of the different things that people threw in there, like all of that glass. Um, so it's really cool to just kind of see and look, and it kind of helps explain one of our tools that we use. You heard about that a little bit earlier, dowsing rods. Um, yeah, so the dowsing rods, what they're primarily used for is for detect detecting water sources. Um, so I just like to show why we don't use them on the first floor because there's obviously a very large water source right in front of me. So this is what they look like. Um, and so they should, as you walk towards a water source, they cross in front of you. And then as you walk away from it, they go out like that. So we don't host communication sessions or really, with the dowsing rods or anything on the first floor just because we don't think that they'd be too accurate. They obviously move around a lot. Um, we do like to talk, dowsing rods are accustomed to something called pareidolia, which basically means that if you're looking for something bad to happen, you can find it. Especially if you've never used these things before, it's really easy to just flick your wrist one way or the other and get whatever answer that in your mind you were looking for. Um, so 
that's just something you have to be cautious of when you use them. And we will be using maze on yeah. either the second river floor, but we'll see. Kind of just go with the flow. Um, other than that, with this well, we don't really have much activity in here. The only stories that we have are actually that door right over there behind y'all with that little window in it. Um, and it's kind of, they're kind of fun stories. So there's two big ones that I know of. Um, that room right there, it just leads to like a back closet in our gift shop. So it's like a stock room. There's just t-shirts and shelves in there. Um, and so it is always kept locked. But there was an employee in this closet right over here just housed some like field trip supplies and things like that. And so she was coming and going one morning um, to get some of those supplies. And she saw one of her coworkers in that window like making faces at her and like, you know, joking around. And so she didn't think much of it. She was working and she grabbed her stuff. Um, later that day, she saw that coworker and started making faces back at her. And her coworker was like, oh my gosh, what are you doing? That's so unprofessional. We're at work. Why would you do that? And she was like, um, come to find out that coworker that she saw in the window was not even here in the building at that time. So we don't actually know what was in there. Um, it's in a, what do you call it? We, I call it a doppelganger spirit, but we had something very similar um, with our custodial staff. So they get here about, about 8 o'clock in the morning since we open at 10 just to make sure that everything's clean before we open for our guests. And she thought that she saw the gift shop manager in there just because that's who works in there all the time and said that she saw her face pretty clearly. Um, and so the next day she asked her, you know, why were we here so early yesterday? That's really unlike you. You know, your start time is not anywhere close to there. And that the gift shop manager hadn't been here at all that day. That was like her one off day. That um, so that's just a weird thing. And then I've actually had one other story happen, not to me personally, but I watched it happen. So you may hear me mention him a couple times. We used to have a paranormal tutor guy named Matt, and he liked to break the cardinal rule and stray from the group when he wasn't supposed to. Um, never stray from the group. I'm not supposed to. Say. But we were over there by the well talking about how the well wasn't haunted, but this window kind of was, and he walked past it, and the light popped on. And I'm just like, the light should not pop on, so I can come over here and wave my hands in front of it. Nothing's supposed to happen. Um, so there is a light on the inside of the door pointing towards the inside. So it's motion activated, so nothing should have come on, but as soon as he stepped beside it, bam. And so he was really skeptical at first, and I think that's when he started to kind of change his mind a little bit. Um, so that's just another one of those weird occurrences with the door. I think we're going to go up. We're going to go up through the stairs. And then we'll get to some of the fun investigations. balance system, uh, you have your semicircular canals in your ears, and 
natural if you're off balance, it just makes you more comfy. This room is also an average of two degrees colder than every other room in the building for absolutely no reason. It just always is. Um, but we do get a lot of EMF activity in here that you'll notice just as you walk around the room. We get a lot against this brick wall, which by either of these display cases, that would make sense because there's electricity running through them. Um, but any other part of the wall, or I mean, any part, other part of the room and the wall doesn't really make too much sense. It just kind of happens. Um, but if you want to walk around and explore for a minute, I am going to use the spirit box in here. The EMF readers get a lot of activity in here. Yeah. If you're wondering what's behind the closets on either side, it's just a storage room. There's absolutely nothing in there. So a spirit box, if you've never seen one before, what it does is it scans through AM or FM uh, radio stations rapidly. And so it gives the chance for anything, if they want to speak, to kind of throw in small words or phrases. Um, and it should pick those up because it'll sound different just from the flipping of the channels. And this could be really loud when I turn it on. So just fair warning, I'll try to keep it. And if y'all want to ask any questions, feel free. You can tell me to ask them or ask them yourselves. Just make sure you're being respectful with the questions you ask. So you don't want to ask things like, why did you die or why are you here? Things like that for obvious reasons.
archivist, you can follow us up there. So thank you for talking. So y'all heard us mention that tornado a lot. There was one death on the premise because of it. Um, so his name was Vernon Powell. He was actually, he was the first African-American worker that the museum, or the factory ever had. And his nickname is Shorty. So if you ever hear say Shorty from here on out, that is who we're referencing. Um, through historic records, he actually was about five, two or five, three. So the nickname holds true. Um, but Shorty, he was a supervisor slash truck driver. So he was mainly in charge of like incoming sugar shipments and things, uh, cases of bottles, things like that. And that day, whenever the tornado was about to hit, he saw that all of the winds were picking up and it started raining really bad. And so he sent all of his workers inside and pretty much everybody that was outside. He said, you know, y'all go ahead and go in. I'll handle the rest. I'll move all of the trucks. Um, so he is deemed somewhat of a hero. And so he, he died a hero because as soon as he sent everybody inside, one of those trucks got picked up by the wind and then pinned him against the building and the building proceeded to fall down. So it's very tragic, but I'm going to play a video. We do believe that we've gotten into contact with Shorty pretty frequently, almost every single tour. Um, but this is somebody that got into contact with him. So uh, I've talked to several people on 
this board, but I'm still going to lay ground rules with the dowsing rods. I'm going to ask you yes or no questions, and we're going to call this neutral, and if I ask a question and the answer is yes, I want you to cross the rods like this for me, and I'll tell you to go back to neutral, give you your pep talks if you need them, and if I ask a question and the answer is no, I want you to go out with the rods like this. Is there anybody here that would like to speak? You got to cross the board and then leave them out. Okay, we're going to call that yes. Can you go back to neutral for me, please? Or center? You got to move both of them. That's what I mean by that. Is your friend Joseph waiting for us on the third floor? That's what I think. I just had to ask. Can you go back to center for me, please? Does anybody have a question that they want me to ask? On audio recording, that we will leave the same train right as the train is passing by, which is kind of strange.
yes or no. We're kind of wibbly wobbly. You can do it. I'm just as good at pep talks as Mary Hill. <laughs> there we go. That seems like a cross. All right, can you go ahead and push this back out to neutral for me? Come on. You push them in, you gotta be able to push them out. I will start seeing you salt and pepper. It probably wasn't where you're coming every day to shop, um, but that was this building. We didn't originally own it. We acquired it, I believe, like 2016. Yeah, but this, 2016. Is the, this is the oldest commercial building in downtown Waco. So it's built in 1882. And so it does house our soda fountain and then a couple more exhibits over here and all of our experiences. Um, for obvious reasons like health, food, health, and safety, we can't go back into our soda fountain because there is food and things back there. We don't really have much um, phenomena that happens back there, um, especially because there is a lot of metal and electronics and flowing water and all of that, so it's really hard to get like nice, good readings. The only instances of things that we have happen back there are our soda jerks. Um, they wear 
aprons, and a lot of times the aprons will just mysteriously come undone, like when you double knot it, or they'll feel some like tugging on their hair and look around to yell at the coworker and nobody's there. Um, I do speak from experience. That is something that has happened to me. I actually started in the soda fountain when I was here at the museum, and those aprons do not stay on. Like no matter how tight, how many knots you tie, they always come undone. Um, and I had just thought nothing of it until I came on this tour, and they told me that. I said, oh, I'm glad I don't work back there anymore. It's not kind of freaks me out a little bit. But other than that, we don't have really anything else that happens in this space because of that. Um, so we're going to go ahead and move this way. play jokes on you and stuff like that. Um, so I call this my like initiation story. But the morning after my very first tour, I came into work. So I normally work here during the daytime, doing like additional paid experiences and stuff like that. And I came back, and I was in a space that didn't have any water source. So there was a sink and a fridge probably like a good 30 feet away from where I was standing. And there was this massive puddle, probably about this big, in the middle of the floor. We have rags, and so naturally I went and I cleaned up this big puddle of rags, and I'd turn around and every like 30 seconds it would completely reappear. Um, and it did that probably eight times before I completely ran out of rags, and I had all the sopping wet ones sitting to the side in the big bin. Um, and it was on a weekend, so we don't normally have our facilities people here on the weekends, just because they work 9 to 5 Monday through Friday. And so I went and I grabbed our intern for the summer and brought him back and asked him, you know, I was telling him, trying to explain the situation, saying, should I call facilities? Could there be something seriously wrong? Um, and I brought him back into the room, and as soon as he came in, it was completely gone. But I still had all of the stopping wet rags and had used every last one of them that we had for the day. Um, so that was a, my weird thing. And then the next tour that I went on the following week, I was talking to Shorty, and I asked him if he did it. And it like, kind of wavered for a minute and then slowly pointed to no. And I immediately asked, are you lying? And it like, flew to yes. Um, so that's how we like to say that he likes to play jokes on people. He's a trickster. I had that story. And then I also had an experience um, with the basement staircase that we're about to go down. I don't know why I started telling the story before we go down the basement stairs, but that's OK. <laughs> um, <laughs> about five minutes after all of our guests had left, this was probably about six months ago now, uh, my friend Matt, another tour guide that I've mentioned, decided that he wanted to watch the security footage cameras for some random reason. He's an odd one. Um, and he was watching the security footage of those ba that basement staircase that we're about to go down. And he thought that he saw orbs moving around on the stairs and on the walls. And so naturally, I came over and I pulled out my phone and started videoing it. And so about 10 seconds into the video, the door at the bottom of the basement stairs slammed. Um, and it's kind of funny because I dropped my phone and Matt and I looked at each other and both ran out of the building as fast as possible. So we do not have nerves still, just letting y'all know. Um, I also recommend never watching yourself run on camera because it's a very humbling experience. Um, but that's another one of those strange things that's happened to me. But we do actually have some video footage of the basement staircases on our iPad. We don't know if they're orbs or what it is really, but we have a guy in London that we send video footage off to, and his entire career is based around debunking stuff. Um, so he goes through all of the causes of what it could be scientifically before um, jumping to paranormal stuff. And we sent it off, and he went through it a couple times, and two months later he got back to us and said basically that he had no idea and that he couldn't attribute it to anything that wasn't paranormal. I believe it looks like footsteps coming up the stairs. That's my personal theory, but I know the crowd I don't play it all the time. Mm -hmm. 